Jack Fresh, the PCGYN, and today I'm going to show you how to remove malware in 30 minutes or less. So we've got this machine in today. A lot of people don't know that I run a computer store in my spare time. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to sell it, so if you know anybody wants to buy one, let me know. Anyway, um, this computer is all jacked up. It's got Chromium as a browser, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's something you probably did install. So I call it malware because it installs itself without your knowledge or permission. This guy is, I have no idea. I thought I was using Chrome. No, you're using Chromium, which is a separate browser, and it does all kinds of funky things, wonky things, and it is not Google Chrome. It's not the official Google Chrome. And you can see here in the Task Manager, you can hit Control alt delete to pull this up and click on Task Manager. You've got this geek buddy in here and all kinds of other stuff he didn't install and it's really pegging his processor he came in and said why is my computer so slow and i said what do you got running on this thing he goes i don't know i've got this video thing i didn't install i've got this chromium browser i got this geek buddy i've got this uh slim cleaner all this stuff that is installed in my computer running competing for processor cycles that is installed on my computer, but I didn't manually install with my knowledge or permission. It just kind of piggybacked on something else, on installing something else. Um, a lot of people call them malware. A lot of companies call them malware. You have to be careful if you're a commercial entity. You can't call some things malware or they'll end up taking you to court and uh, filing paperwork against you. It's kind of uh, nasty, as the uh, bleeping computers found out, which is a uh, horrible Horrible thing that happened to them and support them. Check out bleepingcomputers.com and make a contribution if you can to help them out. Uh, this is my magical flash drive. This is where I store a lot of the tools that I use, a lot of the free tools. I forgot to mention it's free to, to, to remove this malware on your computer. I'll have to put that in the title too. But uh, yeah, we've got this driver update thing. These are not necessary. It's not that they're all bad or malicious. It's just they're trying to sell you something in most cases, things you probably don't need. Um, so we got this geek buddy, which is, it turns out this is a real bear to get rid of, man. It was hiding in a whole bunch of places. So you can look down here in the tray and this is windows 10 and you can see all this stuff running in the background. So the first thing I do is I go to apps and features, just go to settings and then go to apps and features. And then I sort them by the install date. Cause typically the, the stuff that installed itself is usually the latest stuff that started bothering you in uh, chronological order, descending order. So. I'm going to take Chromium out too, although when I try to uninstall it here, it does not let me uninstall it. Although it tells you it's uninstalling it, I'll be darned if it does. And then there's this PC Keeper antivirus and this Pluto TV, which plays a whole bunch of advertisements. You know, this stuff's all ad supported. I'm just not sure what kind of companies are actually buying things from these vendors. So it's, it's kind of weird. It's probably stuff you don't want. It's not name brand stuff. It's just kind of out there in left field, and you don't want it on your computer, and all this stuff's slowing you down. You saw how big the, uh, the load was on the CPU on this computer. Then you've got this web bar toolbar, which is uh, not real helpful either. You already have the Google search or the Bing search or the Yahoo search. You're gonna search using your browser. You don't need a toolbar to do searches. And all these things just install themselves and throw all this stuff on here. I never answer the surveys on why I'm uninstalling it. Really, you need to know why I'm uninstalling your crap that I didn't give you permission to install, so I'm not going to help their marketing company. <laughs> so you tell them why you uninstalled it, they may do something to change it, and then you won't want to uninstall it. But, and then this slimware thing comes up here, and uh, it, does a, it pretends to do a lot of things like uh, that your PC already does through Microsoft software. Windows is a wonderful tool. It's got virtually everything you need is in terms of computer maintenance, it's already built into the operating system. So no need to spend any more money unless you want to, unless there's something on Slim Cleaner and you're a big fan and you like their t-shirts and who knows, maybe they sponsor a NASCAR car. NASCAR car, is that what you call them? So I'm trying to uninstall it and you see it's giving me a hard time here. It's coming up. The first time I went to uninstall it, it brought up a web page. The second time it looks like it's gonna uninstall, but I'm not completely sure. So. And once we go through and remove all the stuff we don't recognize, all the stuff that was recently installed, it installed without my knowledge or permission, or the customer's knowledge or permission, we're going to uninstall all that stuff. And uh, it's probably going to reboot a couple of times, so give yourself an allowance for that. But still, in this whole thing, we can get this whole kit and caboodle done and tied up and your computer cleaned up, 95% cleaned up within 30 minutes or less. So uh, again, another survey, we don't fill those out and something forced to reboot here. And then uh, we'll move on and show you some of the tools that we use. Actually, we're going to use three of them, three free tools that are going to make your computer 100% better. 
Uh, it won't be completely cleaned up because we do when we do a virus malware cleanup. We do a lot. We use 14 different utilities, but this is only using three. So let's uh, move on to uh, the other stuff after it restarts. So we've rebooted it, taking a look at Task Manager, and we can already see there's much less load on the CPU on the processor just from un uninstalling those applications that we were able to uninstall. Sorry for the really bad video. This was on a customer's computer. I didn't want to install video capture software on somebody else's computer. But Geek Buddy's still here. Remember we tried to uninstall that and it wouldn't let us? And uh, we'll show you how to get rid of this too. So the first thing we're going to do is a really neat product called ADW Cleaner. It was made by some technician... Uh, somewhere in the world. I'm really not sure where they are. There's a couple of places you can download it. You can get it from Bleeping Computer along with a whole bunch of other cool stuff. But this toolslive.net or toolslib.net is the uh, official website for it. That's where we typically download it from. And again, this is completely free. You're welcome to make donations. And again, you should. You should support good people who are doing hard work to try to uh, make your life a little bit better. And we donate to all of these companies through our business. So uh, it's a pretty quick download. It's a surprisingly small footprint, a tiny little program, but it really kicks butt. And I'd have to say, if I had to rate them, this is probably our number one malware removal tool right now, this ADW Cleaner. And we've got a couple other ones. We're going to use three of them in this video, and uh, we'll show you what they do and why we use them. So this is it. You just run it, you download it, save it, run it, and then scan. And it does the rest. It requires no intervention from you during the scanning process. It updates automatically. If it's an old version, it tells you, hey, this is an old version. Click here to go to the website, download the latest one. And it'll take you to this website here. It's just toolslib.net, downloads, blah, blah, blah. You can do a Google or Yahoo search. It comes up. ADW Cleaner is what you want. Now, the second tool we use is made, well, it wasn't made by Malwarebytes. It was acquired by Malwarebytes, I suppose, at some point. I'm not really sure of the history of it. But um. You can go ahead and download this too, assuming you have an internet connection. Again, we see some of these computers come in here and their internets are, their internet connection is all jacked up because of a TCP IP um, browser stack break because of one of these malware programs goes rogue and just damage. I don't know what the point of ruining your internet connection is. But anyway, this GRT junk removal tool that's uh, part of Malware Bytes now is the second tool, probably the number two tool we use. And uh, this will actually close every application uh, on your computer. Not everyone, but most of them. So if you're running another scan with ADW Cleaner, it's going to close that out. So this one here is telling us it found a whole bunch of, look how many threats it found. So it shows us what it is. You can kind of kind of peruse through the 140 things it found, including 140 things it found, including registry edits and, and browser plugins and scheduled tasks and all this stuff you really don't need on your computer. We have not run into a situation with ADW Cleaner where it has deleted anything that we've ever needed. So go ahead and click the clean button and it's going to wipe out all those 140 things. It's going to close out all your other programs too. So it's good to run ADW Cleaner first. And then it's going to force you to reboot and then come in and then run your JRT, your junk removal tool, and then reboot again. And then we'll jump on to the third one. But you can see all this stuff on here. Again, it's not all adware, not all malware, but stuff you truly don't necessarily need to run on your computer. Things that may slow you down, things that may confuse you. And again, uh, we've been using this for several years, have not run into a circumstance where ADW Cleaner has broken a computer during our malware scan. So we've either been very fortunate or the guys that write this are geniuses. So it gives you a little summary of what you can do and some nice tips on how to uh, keep yourself safe in the future, which are really good, valid tips. And uh, you go ahead and click OK, and then the next page comes up and says, hey, we're going to reboot you now to get rid of the stuff that we can't delete while you're in Windows. So go ahead and let it do that. It'll reboot. You'll log in. It's gonna, we're going to close the JRT and come back to that right after we reboot this computer. All right, so she booted back up, and it gives you a nice little text report of everything it deleted. So if you do this professionally, you can save this and show this to your customers to... Uh, Show them that you didn't just sit around and do nothing and eat bonbons. You actually did some work. So this is a JRT. We're going to go ahead and run this. We've already downloaded it. Again, it's JRT by uh, Malwarebytes. And uh, we'll go ahead and run this. It creates a little restore point. Not the traditional restore point. It's more of a file-based restore point, a, a manual restore point. In case it does anything or removes anything that uh, it shouldn't remove. And again, I've never seen JRT or ADW Cleaner remove anything or damage an operating system to date. And again, we use these on several hundred computers, maybe thousands of computers over several years. And haven't seen any problems yet. Knock on wood. 
All right, so it goes through all this stuff, checks your startup, your services, your file system, browsers, registry. I'm not sure what that error here is under services, but uh, uh, it did go ahead and uh, clean up everything it found. And uh, it takes, uh, I guess it usually takes about four to five minutes for this thing to run very, very quick. And it also provides you with a nice little report. And uh, again, JRT can remove some stuff, some leftovers that ADW maybe couldn't remove at the time or maybe missed, hard to say. So um, that's uh, JRT, part two. And part three, we're going to use another free tool. It is, there's a paid version of this, and you should buy the paid version if you're a professional and use a, a commercial license. So we do that also. And it's called um, Hitman Pro by, well, it used to be a company called Surfrite, but now they're owned by Sophos, which is a pretty big antivirus company in Europe. So Hitman Pro, there's a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. Mostly everything's 64-bit in Windows 10. So go ahead and uh, download that Hitman Pro. And uh, again, this is a pretty quick run, too. You can finish this in usually under 10 minutes. So we're running three tools in well under 30 minutes and knocking out 95, I'd say 95, maybe even more percent of the adware, malware junk on this computer that shouldn't be there and it's slowing it down. So you've got some startup options here. You can click all that stuff. Again, if you're a professional, you should buy a, uh, it's called an incidence license. And I think they're 15 to $20 a pop, but you're charging a bunch of money for virus removal. So you definitely should do that. If you're a consumer, you can run this for free and it runs for free for, I think, 30 days. And it'll remove everything off your computer uh, that the other two things missed. Again, we'll do ADW first. We'll do JRT second. Then we do Hitman Pro the third. And uh, let that run through its little course. They also have this uh, paid version. It offers real-time security. So if you were a victim of a ransomware virus, a, uh, Hitman Pro could have prevented that from coming in also, among other tools. All right, we skip forward a little bit, and uh, Hitman Pro is finishing up now, and it's uh, once the interface turns red, it indicates that it found a Trojan or malware or something on here, something you definitely don't want on your computer. And what's neat about uh, Hitman Pro is you can double-click on any of the one of the uh, malware or spyware or adware, or whatever it finds, Trojans, you can double-click on it. It tells you a little bit more about it, what it does, what its payload is, why they flagged it. There are false positives in some cases, but again, in many cases, uh, usually what these things find are either unnecessary or malicious in nature. So I've trusted this program, too. I have run into one or two incidences where Hitman Pro did actually damage an operating system by deleting something that was needed by Windows. But it was easy enough to system restore back to that uh, particular place and uh, go ahead and run it again and not delete the file that we actually needed. Did a little bit of research on that. So Hitman Pro, uh, not as fail-safe as the other two, but it's still a genuinely good program. It does find a lot of stuff. And it's finding all this after we've already run ADW and JRT. So there's still leftovers, which is why we use 14 different tools when we scan computers. Each one finds something a little bit different. And... Uh, to do a true, real cleanup, you need to run all these things. And uh, But if you're just a consumer and you just want to get back online, finish your homework, look at your sports, watch TV, do Netflix or whatever, these three tools may be enough to get you back where you were and make your computer safe and usable again. Now, um, we have several other videos on here on our YouTube channel and also under Computer Care Clinics. Make sure you like and subscribe to that, which will teach you about uh, computing safely, how to avoid things that may be malicious, and also about antivirus, anti-malware programs here. So um, you'll have to activate it. If you're a consumer, go ahead and click on Activate Free License. Otherwise, put your product key in if you're a commercial guy, and uh, it'll activate and then start removing all that stuff. And in some cases, it'll force you to reboot. Other cases, it won't. Some things can't be removed while you're in Windows because uh, your computer won't give you access to those files. So um, I, oh, I change everything to delete here. There's either delete or quarantine, but you really don't want to quarantine it. What, what do you want to keep it in there for? I mean, if you denied access to it and your computer crashes, it's not going to do you any good in quarantine anyway. So go ahead and just delete all the stuff out of here and then reboot once again. And then uh, we'll take a look at the task manager and see what we got left. All right, we've gone ahead and killed all this stuff. And look at that. Our CPU is way down. Somewhere between 8 to 10% is normal for Windows 10. 
You've got all kinds of processes running in the background. You see the speed of the CPU is bouncing all over the place, too. It increases as necessary. And I'm looking through my task manager, and I still got that darn geek buddy in here. And I'm not sure why that's here. My customer says he didn't install it, doesn't know where it is. So you can right-click on it, and it'll open up the location in your Windows Explorer where that lives. And if you delete it out of Windows Explorer, then it can't open it. So it's part of this Komodo suite of things that some people find helpful. I personally am not a big fan of them. Um, but, and then I just, if I'm doing a virus cleanup, my customer doesn't want Komodo on there, I'm going to go ahead and delete it. But it's saying, hey, you can't delete it because it's being used. Well, if I look down in the tray or here, I'm going to see, well, there it is. Let me end task here. But it keeps coming back. This sneaky little son of a gun. It's like, hey, I'm not deleting myself. I'm not deleting myself. So you've got to end it again. And I look at task manager. There it is again. It started itself. And you can go through this cat and mouse game several times. But uh, what you have to do is kind of be tricky and delete it. You need to do it outside of Windows using Linux, which we do for a lot of stuff. Or you can do it in Windows. But you need to find these other components, which are live PC support component. And you've got to turn all these off in task manager. Just end task for all of these. And then... Um, Go back and make sure that the uh, the other geek buddy thing isn't there, and then it'll let you delete the entire folder. You see where it is, program files, under common files, and Komodo, and boom, all that stuff's gone. So, and there's uh, something else here. Komodo, oh, look at geek buddy still running there, son of a gun. And then Chromium, I'm trying to get rid of Chromium. This is the startup component of the task manager window, the new thing now. It used to use MS config, and now it's uh, under uh, task manager. So you can disable all this stuff from starting up. Does that get rid of it? Not necessarily, but it may stop it from running. And in a pinch, if you just need to do something quickly, you can do that here, reboot, and it shouldn't come back up, although I'm not sure I didn't test it. I'm thinking this geek buddy actually may come back up. But uh, Chromium's still here. Remember we uninstalled that? We also uninstalled GeekBuddy, and they're still here. So you can right-click on it again. You can poke around, find out where that file lives. Let's go back to Task Manager. And we'll click on Open File Location by right-clicking on it. And there it is. Look at that. It's under App Data Local Chromium. Like, why would you put a program under App Data and Local? Anyway, I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to get rid of that thing. It'll make sure you close all the Chromium windows. Boom, it's gone. When you reboot your computer, it can no longer load that stuff. And there's still a few stragglers here. You can delete those folders also. So that's it. Go ahead and reboot your computer. You should be in good shape. You should be able to actually use it again. Your processor won't drag as bad as it did. And uh, you should be pretty safe to uh, visit the websites and do the work you need to do on your computer. My name is Chuck Fresh. Please like, subscribe, and make a donation, too. And uh, our other website, computercareclinic.com, also has links to our YouTube channel where you can subscribe to those videos. A lot of self-help stuff there and training information, computercareclinic.com. Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope all your malware troubles go away.